Welcome back, everybody. It feels like only 50 minutes ago. (laughs) Oh, boy. We are here to discuss Ukraine, but a number of us were just watching the uh, January 6th committee hearings that just finished. And uh, I signed off about 50 minutes ago so I can get ready for this. But uh, anyway, we can talk about those in a minute. Let me get TikTok rolling here. Boom. (coughs) <coughs> oh boy. <clears throat> Allergies, allergies. And I have some hot, my hot tea to take care of me here as well. Find some topics to discuss with your viewers. Yeah. Tell me about it. Hold on. Just waiting for it. There we go. Hi, Amanda Bear. Let me uh, flip my screen. Flip my screen. They changed where flip my screen is again because TikTok has to change things every day. There it is. Jesus Christ, you people. All right. And today I'm trying it with the curtains open because you guys wanted the curtains open. It does cause a lot of black, black glare, back glare as well. Hello, everybody. Today I've got my green, my hot green tea with some, uh, some, uh, honey. Hmm. Thank you, Smilings Free, for that. <coughs> so hopefully that'll clear me up a little. I have never ceasing allergies. So hey, guys. Um, welcome. I'm John Arvosis, Washington, D.C. This is our regularly scheduled Ukraine update. The way we do this is I do 20 minutes of, of uh, oh, okay, I did not do that. <laughs> Like, <laughs> come on, TikTok. What the fuck? What the hell was that? God, I hate TikTok. What did they do? I didn't even touch anything. You aren't even going to believe what TikTok just did to me. TikTok is now doing this to me. And it's showing me like as some disco version. I didn't even hit anything. Oh, God, TikTok. What is your problem? Hold on. Enhance. Enhance. Okay, no filters are on. I hate TikTok. I freaking, I feel like the guy with the cat, with the cat thing. Dear, I'm like, I didn't even hit anything. (laughs) God. It was showing me as a cartoon. (laughs) TikTok. Why do you do these things to me? (laughs) <laughs> oh my God, that was insane. <laughs> it showed me as a cartoon. <laughs> it's hard. I'm having a hard enough time breathing right now with that. Oh dear Lord. Anyway, this is our regularly scheduled Ukraine update. As always, we wait until about five after or so. So another two minutes. Oh my God. Another two minutes uh, just for folks to filter in. So we're going to hang for another two people usually introduce themselves, say where you're from, which I appreciate because I think it's kind of neat just to see. Yeah, that was worth it. That was definitely worth a laugh. But I felt like the guy, remember, your honor, I am not a cat. (laughs) Tell me everybody knows what I'm talking about, about the lawyer that came across as the cat. Am I right? I'm hoping, I'm hoping somebody doesn't know what I'm talking about. Hold on. Lawyer cat. Lawyer cat. I am going to show you this anyway because it's worth showing again. Oh my God. Come on. This was, oh, lawyer cat zoom, I should say. That will do the whole thing. So this is a lawyer. Everybody has to have seen this. This is a lawyer who was on Zoom. And this is during, of course, the the whole issue of, of COVID, of course. And he, uh, he checks in with the judge. Hold on. This is just so freaking, it's only half a minute. I'm going to show each of you on each of these because it's just so freaking good. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. I'm starting with TikTok and I'll show you guys in a second. So I can hear you. I think 
it's a filter. It, it is, and I don't know how to remove it. I've got my assistant here. She's trying to, but uh, I'm prepared to go forward with it. I'm here live. I'm not, I'm not a cat. <laughs> Oh, I, oh, oh, God. I mean, <laughs> my favorite of that, I'm showing you guys too. Of course it's old. I know this thing's old. It's still hilarious. It reminded me of today when my stupid thing turned into a cartoon. Hold on. I'm showing you guys again. But my favorite with this is the best part too is that the other lawyer, the other attorney, hold on, the other attorney doesn't even look up until he hears the other guy say, I'm not a cat. And then the other attorney's sitting here like the paper and he goes like this. <laughs> like, what the hell's going on? Hold on. This was in the middle of COVID. This actually happened. This was not a fake. You might want to. Uh, uh, we're trying to we're tr can you hear me, Judge? I can hear you. I think it's a filter. It, and it is. I don't know how to remove it. I've got my assistant here. She's trying to, but. Uh, I'm prepared to go forward with it. That's, I'm here live. That's not, I'm not a cat. <laughs> I, can, I can see that. Uh, I think if you click the up arrow oh. next to the screen. Oh, God. Every time it just kills me. <laughs> Every freaking time that one kills me. Oh God. But I love that. I'm prepared to I'm prepared to continue like this. And the judge is like, no. <laughs> no. Um, new multi-guest icon. Dear Lord. Nope. Conversation starters. Enhance. No. Uh, what is that? Where the hell's the Oh, hell. Hell, if I can even find the guest icon. <laughs> um, live entry. I don't even see guest icon here. Maybe that's for you guys. Oh, multi-guest. That's been there for a while. Yeah. Of course, it's only giving me four people I can, I can invite. Why the hell? It's giving me literally four random people I can invite. I'm like, why the hell would I invite four random people? TikTok is so freaking weird. Oh my God. Anyway, guys, welcome. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, I had too much fun with that. Your honor, I'm not a cat. Um, so I'm John Arvosis. We are about to do our Ukraine update and uh, at least I'm about to do it. So typically I do the news for about 20 minutes or so, oops, something in my eye, for about 20 minutes or so, 20, 25 minutes. And then we do question and answer. Ah, my eye. And the question and answer will take us until about a quarter after the next hour. A lot of times we go longer than that too. And then at the end, we usually hang out for about 10 minutes or so and just chit chat, not politics. And actually that ended up being like one of the most fun parts of the entire show. We just sit and we talk about cooking and my dog and every crazy things. Thank you, Canada Zen. So the way uh, we do this is because TikTok removed the Q&A function from my lives. God knows why. You have to go to my profile. And for most of you, you should be able to see my, um, you should be able to see the Q&A in my profile. So go there. If you've got questions, hit the button, cue them there. It's the easiest way to do it. Um, if you have them on the bottom of the screen right here, it doesn't really help because it literally throws it on the screen live and they scroll away anyway. On YouTube, et cetera, Twitch, blah, blah, blah. You guys can use the comment box at the bottom. Um, and I always say, at least for the YouTubers, if you use the super, well, the super chat, what is it? The super, I'm already forgetting what the other one's called. The other super thing, whatever the hell it's called is a way of just saying, thank you. And I will publicly thank you for it. And the super chat questions, excuse me, you can access both of these by the dollar sign at the bottom of the of the, of the screen. If you do a super chat question, I will always make an effort to get to that. The next thing, sometimes I miss it and our ever industrious mods will say, John, you forgot the question, but super stickers, there you go. Super stickers are the other ones, but for the super chat, it's a nice way to support me for my work, but also uh, a nice way to get your questions seen because I get so many questions. There's just no way to, uh, to get to all of them. So 
So that's why I always guarantee the super chat questions I always get to. And I get to them the next thing. And finally, on TikTok, I always appreciate when you guys do the gifts. And I will always try to call out uh, as soon as I see the gift going by. So thank you for that. Uh, that is my finger in my eye because I felt like I had an eyelash in my eye, which was very annoying. All righty. So here we go. Uh -uh -uh. A little bit of my hot tea to start with. Um, and yes, the the masters of the masters of Twitch was the masters of Twitch. We called you the master master Twitchers, master Twitchers. That sounds a little too sexual. That's what you came up with was master Twitchers. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds a little weird. I kind of like the masters of Twitch, like masters of the universe. And thank you, by the way, for the crane there, style cat. All right, guys, I'm in too good of a mood after that, after that freaky thing it just did to me on, on, on TikTok, where it turned me into a cartoon and I did not ask it to turn me into a cartoon. Oh my. Um, that's okay. What was Michael trying to ask about? Oh, we'll talk. Let's talk about that later. Let's talk about that later when we get to the Q&A. It's a fair question. It comes up a lot. Um, all right, guys. So first of all, the big, the big, big, big news of the day is that the um, Ukraine officially now has European Union candidate status. Mighty Twitchers. Oh, that's better. Mighty Twitchers. <laughs> I called you master Twitchers. No wonder I thought it sounded a little weird. <laughs> Mighty Twitchers is a little better. Oh my, I'm in trouble today. Thank you, Louis, for the dancing cactus. Um, so yeah, so Ukraine was accorded candidate status in the EU today, the European Union. That is a big deal. Um, from what I understand, and don't look to me to be your expert on the European Union, being a good old American myself, but I do know that it's the first step towards becoming a member of the European Union. And once you become a candidate, there's all sorts of hurdles you have to go through to synchronize your laws with the European Union laws. Exactly. Ali is giving giving confetti for the Europeans, for the Ukrainians. Uh, it's synchronizing your laws. It's addressing concerns about corruption. There were concerns about the Ukrainian courts in the past. Uh, oligarchs would help, the rich billionaires would help pick who went on the court as a judge, and then those judges would rule in favor of the oligarchs. So that kind of thing needs to be addressed. Um, uh, just basic laws, for example, Ukraine literally just this week passed uh, the law. It was called, I think, the Istanbul Convention, but it's more or less a law for the protection of um, uh, uh, stopping violence against women or going after violence against women. So a lot of laws that are considered now standard in the European Union, employee protection, civil rights, you name it. So as your candidate, you then get all of that done. And once you prove to the EU that you have uh, sort of are no longer necessary to be on probation, you become a full-fledged member. But it's a huge hurdle that they've passed today. They had to have a unanimous vote by all the current European Union members. Thank you, Christy. So this was great. I did not see. I was so excited to look for uh, for Ukraine. I didn't look and see what happened with Moldova. Did Moldova get it too? I see Kelly Fon saying Moldova too. We're sure about that. Are we sure about that, guys? I know there's always a delay, so when I ask questions, it kind of takes a sec. I'll have a sip of tea while we're waiting. Yep, several TikTokers are saying yes. Excellent. Okay, so Moldova got it too. That's great. Good for Moldova. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, no, this is great. It's something Putin, the irony here, to take it back to sort of Ukraine and the war, Putin claimed he invaded in 2014. Remember back then when he invaded and he stole the province here of, uh, of Crimea in southern Ukraine? That he stole back in 2014. And at the time, Putin claimed he was invading because of uh, Ukraine was getting too close to the European Union. And even back then, they weren't even going for candidate status. They were going for some much less affiliation with the EU. Well, because of him invading now, I am convinced, I mean, I, I'd be curious to see, but I'm convinced that, that this happened because of the invasion. I'd be very curious if, um, if, if, they, were, if they would not have gotten this status. Or I would be very curious if they would have gotten this status had there had we not had the invasion. So anyway, great news on that front. Um, overview with the war in the East and the war overall. 
I was reading a really nice Twitter thread today that I thought summarized it well. Basically, what the what the woman was saying was that you've pretty much got a situation developing of attrition in the East. In other words, we've got the battle going for Severodonetsk, but once that's over, if it's over, right, they're still battling there, Ukrainians. The larger battle is for the Donbass, which is the region overall, combination of two regions, actually, Donetsk and Luhansk. And it's still not clear. I mean, the the the, the point it was going to get to, the governor of... Donetsk says that Ukraine still controls 45% of the province. Luhansk, the numbers I've seen have always been around, I don't know if it's 85%, 95%. Most of Luhansk has been taken by, by the Russians. And Severodonetsk is really the last remaining big city that they're fighting over. But it's still not clear that, that Putin is going to be able to get that entire region. And what, what the experts are hoping, what this woman was proposing is, that basically NATO needs to come in and give a surge of weapons to help guarantee that Putin is stopped dead in his tracks, that he can't advance any further. And then we then hopefully switch over to Ukraine going on the offensive and then Ukraine trying to win its, its land back step by step. Now, one point she made, which was interesting, is that that's already happening in the South. And we've already heard this anecdotally because I've told you how there have already been, uh, you know, counter, uh, counter offensives going on. Thank you, Christy. Counter offensives going on in Kherson around here, that there have been some counter offensives that they're actually, uh, there have been some, but now they're preparing for bigger ones here in the Zaporizhia area. And mind you, these are all down here. This is up here. And one of the things that the, and this woman backed up what I was telling you guys, one of the things that Ukraine has done so effectively is by fighting so hard to win Severodonetsk in the East. I mean, the Ukrainians could have just ceded the land. I mean, it's one town. It's strategic, but it's one town. Nonetheless, they kept fighting the way they do like Trojans or like Spartans, I should say. Um, and they, that is my team. Well, it's not. It's not, it, it's my t-shirt, correct, that my sister gave me as a gift, but it works as a great, it works as a great map. <laughs> um, but what um, what the Ukrainians have done so well is they've tied down the Russian troops and they forced Russia to put everything into Severodonetsk because clearly, this is just my take, clearly Putin, oh, I've got my TikTok mic on and it's not plugged in. You know what I did? Sorry, I had my uh, battery plugged in because after doing the two hours of the live committee hearing, my battery had drained down and I didn't want to have the battery down. So yes, now I've got my mic plugged in. I saw something plugged in, but didn't realize it was my battery. Um, so what the Ukrainians did is, I think Putin gave out the order that he wants Eastern Ukraine and he, Donbass and he wants it now, right? Wanted it by the 26th, I guess. He's got three days, good luck, and wants all of it by then. Um, he doesn't care how many Russian troops he kills. He wants it. And Ukraine basically said, okie dokie, you're going to throw everything at it. We're going to keep you there. We're going to make you expend as many men as possible. We are going to kill as many men as possible. We're going to destroy your equipment. And Ukraine has made it so difficult that the Russians have now brought troops in. They had brought troops in from Kharkiv in the north. They brought them from Zaporizhia. They even were bringing them from over from Kherson. Well, so in other words, they were pulling away from all the other fronts to go to the Severodonetsk region because Putin made clear, you better win it. And the Ukrainians were fighting back so hard that the, that the, that the Russians needed more men. They needed more manpower. Well, what that did at the same time was it pulled the Russians away from other regions, which allowed the Ukrainians to start having greater, uh, basically uh, more effective counter offenses in the other regions that, that the Russian troops were pulling back from. So anyway, that's kind of an update on where things are. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed, but just to give you the sense. Um, Washington Post. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else here. Thank you, April, April, April Florida. <laughs> um, no, there's nothing here. That the Republican, the Republicans, I'm doing that again. When I finish the two-hour hearing, I'm saying Republicans instead of Russians. The Russians have made some advancements in the area of Severodonetsk. They've taken over a few more of the nearby towns. 
So, you know, let's see. Let's see what happens. Um, also, this is interesting. Russia is trying to make Kharkiv a frontline city. Kharkiv, second largest city of Ukraine, 1.5 million people way up here. This is a town that the Russians tried to get early on. First, they moved down here and tried to get Kiev the capital and they failed. Remember, they got pushed back. Then they tried to get Kharkiv for like another month or two, failed, got pushed back, got pushed back to the border. They're kind of over here as well. Well, it seems for whatever crazy reason, the Russians are intent on doing, uh, thank you, Netlin, on starting another battle of Kharkiv. They want to try to take the town if they can, and they're trying to turn it into another front. The problem is, as we've said, they just don't have that many troops that are that are combat ready. And it's just a little crazy of what they're doing. Um, where is this? Oh, I think it was last night. Last night I told you guys about the... Um, it was last night. Yeah, it just it got me thinking of last night's story. Thank you, uh, Canada Zen. Last night's story that the new the new Russian recruits were getting between three and seven days of training before they were sent to the most active areas of the front. Okay, so these are the people. <laughs> thank you, Marcy. These are the people the Russians are going to be using to try to take Kharkiv. They're crazy. They just can't, they can't start another front right now. I mean, they may, and who knows, they may pull a rabbit out of a hat and surprise us, but, you know, let's see, let's see. Um, the UK and, uh, UK, Ukrainian intelligence says that Russian proxies are planning to hold staged referendums to proclaim uh, republics in occupied part of Kherson, of Kherson and Zaporizhia on September 11th. Now, when they say to proclaim republics, I'm not sure what they mean. I don't know if they mean independent republics, like independent of Ukraine, or whether they mean they're going to become part of Russia, like which one it is. Clearly, Russia has them on a path to become part of Russia because they've already, uh, they're requiring the ruble be used. They're requiring the language in the schools be Russian, right? All of that. So I don't know which one it is, but nonetheless, uh, they're going to be having some kind of a fake, you know, a fake referendum on September 11th. Uh, in an interview with Germany's uh, newspaper Bild, NATO chief Stoltenberg said that the supply of state-of-the-art weaponry to Ukraine, to Ukrainian troops, would increase the chance of liberating the Donbass region. Now, this was interesting to me. So Stoltenberg is talking about how NATO supplying its best weapons will help increase the chance of Ukraine liberating Donbass. Now, you don't hear, you don't hear the United States talking about liberating Donbass a lot. You certainly don't hear France and China, France and China, France and Germany. Um, the other day, we had a senior State Department official who said nothing about helping Ukraine get its land back. And it's very interesting that Stoltenberg said that because not only does Stoltenberg, in essence, suggest that one of the goals here is our goal as NATO is to get the land back for Ukraine, but he 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 explained how important it was to to have NATO weapons because NATO weapons were how it was going to happen. I think that's interesting. I think he's at odds with the U.S. and France and Germany. And I, I just think this is a little bit of a public battle we're seeing of a little, very subtle, but a subtle little push going on there. That's my take. Um, the Oh, good news. Um, the Ukrainian defense minister announced that the U.S. made HIMARS uh, multi-launch rocket systems have arrived. Thank you, Raylene, for that. The in we have promised Ukraine four of them. All four are in Ukraine now. That's good. Uh, we wanted to do the training, I guess, before they before they got there. The training is now done. The U.S. also today announced it is going to be sending four more of the rocket systems. These are the rocket systems that can go like forty three miles or so and are considered a major game changer. Major game changer for Ukraine. Now, the only thing that worries me about this. Thank you, Kanausi is the U.S. has given them four. The U.S. promises another four. That's eight. The U.K. is promising or giving them three. 
That's 11. The Germans, I think, are promising another three or four. Again, promising, you know, the Germans. Um, that gets you to, let's say liberally, that gets you to 15. The Ukrainians say they need two to 300 of these systems. They've now got eight. No, they've got four right now. They may have more. On I don't know whether they've gotten the rest of them yet, but, you know, this is not great. <laughs> this is not great. I mean, I'm glad they're there, but this again makes me feel like, again, we're not doing a Stoltenberg, we're doing a Biden. We're giving them just enough to keep going, but not enough. Exactly. Quien es mas macho? That's exactly right, Elise, for those who remember that from SNL. Um, so, yeah, so there's that. Um, Nike, this was good today. Nike and Cisco both announced today that they are leaving Russia for good. They are two of the, obviously, most, if not every, Western company had announced that they were pausing operations in Russia, right, when the war broke out and the sanctions went into place. But today, Nike and Cisco said they're gone. They're pulling out totally. They joined Starbucks, McDonald's, Renault, Marks & Spencer. I sort of forget who else now. Uh, thank you, Flower Lady, for that. And every time a new company does this, or today too, this is, it's building up momentum for more companies to do this. And this is a disaster for Russia because I guarantee you, Putin sat there when, when the initial pause came, Putin sat there and said, we're going to win in three days. And as soon as we win, we're going to reopen Ukraine for business. Our guy will be in charge. Ikea too. Okay. Nobody will be the wiser and all of these companies will come back. Well, now all these companies are saying we're gone. We're not coming back. Um, it's going to take a long time to get these companies back. And that is going to be, it, it, it not only ratchets, ratchets up the pressure on Putin, but it also ratchets up the pressure on the Russian economy because it means this economy isn't going to come back as quickly as people think. It's not like all the businesses are going to open up again. And the, and the money comes flowing. So it's really good news long-term. Now, <laughs> this is cute. I printed a poll, but of course I can't read it because my ink is getting, <laughs> there's a really good, there's a really good Swedish poll that I can't read. A Pew poll today came out. Pew is a very well-respected American pollster, but bottom line is it's showing how uh, views on NATO have really soared in Sweden over the last couple of years, uh, especially because of the war, obviously. Let me see if I can find. The rest of it's not so bad. Yeah, favorable. God, this is bad. It totally, I don't usually print print color. It totally ran out of color today. It was also, you guys can Google it if you have to. It's P-E-W is Pew. But what, um, thank you, Lizzie, for that. What it was showing was the, the views of a large number of countries, and I think it's European countries, on, on NATO and the U.S., and how the views on NATO and the U.S. are largely positive, big surprise. Russia, it's 85% negative. Um, Putin, it's 90%. Putin, well, th they said for confidence or no confidence. Biden, the confidence is I'm trying to I'm trying to extrapolate this. Confidence in Biden was like 61% in Europe. Um, no confidence, 39%. Confidence in Putin, 10%. No confidence, 90%. Um, anyway, it was a very good poll, all in all, showing that uh, confidence remains strong in uh, in Europe, in both NATO and the United States, and not so well with Putin, which is good. Thank you, Tom Stelling, for that. And I did see NATO bot. Thank you for the hat. Sorry, another sip of my tea. Yeah, like I said, you'll have to excuse me a little tonight because literally we had two hours of that January 6th hearing and almost no break. So I took the break I could to wolf down some food and then make my hot tea to hopefully hold me over. Uh, this was good from Germany. Germany is talking of a new Marshall plan for Ukraine. I thought that was good. Um, German Chancellor Schultz on Wednesday said Ukraine would need significant economic aid to rebuild, similar to the U.S. initiative, um, oop, Crusher, thank you for that, to the uh, initiative providing foreign aid to Western Europe after World War II. 
Speaking to the German parliament, Schultz said that the group of seven countries this month would discuss for Ukraine its own Marshall Plan, a group of seven, seven largest economies in the world, um, or largest, I should say, the largest uh, democratic economies in the world. Um, and there you go. So I thought that was interesting coming from Schultz. But of course, you know. And I mean it. I really mean this, that the 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 German government has been speaking out of both sides of its mouth. Uh, I read more today about the German, uh, I don't know if he's national security advisor, but he's the top foreign policy advisor to uh, to Schultz. Pl Plotzin is his name or something. And I was reading more of the interview. We talked about it the other day, but just horrible interview, horrible interview. People were talking about, you know, there's a lot of reports that you're not giving the weapons to Ukraine that you said you were going to give. And his response was, we shouldn't be talking about weapons. We shouldn't be discussing how many weapons we're giving to Ukraine. We should be discussing what our relationship will be like with, with Russia after the war. I mean, imagine, imagine, you know. Um, let me go next. If anybody else can't hear me on TikTok, let me know. Otherwise, Mo, you're out of luck. Um... What else did we have? Ukraine is to begin the first trial of Russian soldiers. Um, okay, that was weird. Okay, left and came back. Ukraine is to, to begin the first trial of a Russian soldier accused of rape. Mikhail Romanov, 32, is accused of murdering a civilian man in the Kiev region on March 9th and then repeatedly raping his wife. Jesus. A preliminary hearing in the country's first such trial is expected on June 23rd, and the man will be tried in abstentia as he is not in Ukraine. Okay, he's got to be in Russia. Um, a prosecutor told Reuters that up to 50 such crimes were currently being investigated, but that the number of cases was likely higher. Um, the U.S. Supreme Court, actually, this is all I've got for news today. I didn't have a lot of news. The U.S. Supreme Court ruled today that Americans have a constitutional right to carry concealed weapons in public, just to let you know how screwed up our country is, Europeans. Um, and we had the hearing today, which I can tell you a little bit about. I'm really bad at summarizing things, but uh, a little more tea. I may even pop this in the microwave in a second because it cools down awfully quickly. So the hearing today was very interesting. This was the fifth hearing, I believe, of the January 6th committee, the U.S. House investigation of the uh, of the January 6th attack on our Capitol, the insurrection. And it was interesting because the witnesses were three officials of the Department of Justice. I believe all three were appointed by Donald Trump, I believe, which is interesting right there. All three are presumably Republicans. And the the person in charge of the hearing today was Adam Kinzinger, who is a Republican congressman who is super duper far right conservative. He's not crazy, but Kinzinger is a super duper conservative congressman, member congressman. And so to have Kinzinger, who's really to the right, interviewing these four men who are presumably Republicans who voted for Donald Trump, otherwise they wouldn't have gotten these jobs, um, was very interesting because it was a Republican hearing. And what they were particularly looking at was this one man in particular, Jeffrey Clark, who, ah, hard to explain, but he was one of the top co-conspirators of Trump's effort to, uh, to institute the coup on January 6th. Clark was his uh, was his go to man, and uh, interestingly enough, the FBI, well, federal agents, we presume it was the FBI, excuse me, the FBI executed a search warrant of of Clark's home yesterday uh, in the D.C. area, and when they execute a search warrant, it's not really good news because if the FBI searching your home, it it often does look like you're gonna, you know, you're gonna be charged with a crime. And Dan, I will stop talking about the coup stuff when Donald Trump stops trying to institute a coup. But it is important to our country. This is important and it's ongoing. And I'm fine, not nuts. I'm just really tired. We had two hours of that thing, and I'm just, it's like, 
It's easy to get distracted because it was so long, that hearing, and it literally finished 50 minutes before we started with you guys. <laughs> so I had just enough time to get my coffee. Fit, I, I prepared my notes in advance, but finished looking at my notes. So that's why I may be a little slower than normal. <laughs> I'm exhausted from the earlier show we did. Um, but yes, so we are going to do a summary of this because this is incredibly important. It is incredibly important. Um, and frankly, we now have Republicans in agreement that it's incredibly important and that a potential crime took place and that this was this was an issue of criminal fraud. And it was an issue of trying to overthrow our government, trying to have a coup d'etat. And again, I will say it again. These are Republicans who voted for Donald Trump. These are Republicans who Donald Trump appointed to office and they were on national TV saying what Donald Trump did, how he tried to have a coup, and how it was wrong. And anybody who wants to disagree about that, you can try to minimize it all you want, but it was Donald Trump's top people who are the biggest witnesses against Donald Trump on this. They're the ones. In the last couple of hearings, it's been all Donald Trump's people testifying against Donald Trump. And at some point, you guys have got to come to terms with the fact that Donald Trump's own attorney general said there was no voter fraud that influenced the election. But you know better than Donald Trump's own attorney general. You know better than the 60 courts, six zero courts, thank you, Putin sucks, that these court cases were taken to and the courts threw out all 60 of them. I've told you guys this before, and I'm sorry, but there's an element of the Republican Party that's kind of nutsy cuckoo. You guys have got to ask yourself and say, either there's a conspiracy where only the dumbest people in the world have the truth, or maybe what we're saying is true, right? I mean, either it's the crazies on Fox News, and mind you, not even all of them, right? A number of the Fox News folks were chased away because they said this stuff didn't happen, but it's, the, it's Newsmax, it's One American News, it's the crazies. But the courts of law say it didn't happen. Donald Trump's own attorney general says it didn't happen. Donald Trump's other top three appointees at the Justice Department who were on TV today say it didn't happen. The election wasn't stolen. At some point, you got to come to terms with that fact. You think it was stolen and the crazies think it was stolen. But the actual experts that your own boss, the guy you elected picked, they say the election wasn't stolen, and they say Donald Trump attempted to have a coup d'etat of this country. Donald Trump's own top people are saying it now. So at some point, you got to wonder. You got to wonder. And I'm just asking you to keep an open mind about it because this shit is dangerous. And this isn't about partisan politics. This shit is dangerous. Jesus Christ, you people, I swear to God. I mean, I know the internet has sort of opened up the world to every lunatic, you know? I'd like to think that some of these people are normal who are coming on, but I just kind of worry that it's that it's the, you know, as my sister once called it, the wormhole. She used to call it the wormhole to the Jerry Springer show, which Americans would understand, where it's just all the crazies coming in, you know? I've had Ukrainians on before, Aiden. The problem is guests don't work because we're beaming on two different things. So if I beam, if I have guests, they're going on TikTok. They're not going on YouTube. <laughs> like, because TikTok has usually got five to six times the, the number of guests we've got on YouTube. So unless you guys are all willing to go over to TikTok, I can have more guests, but they've got far more. I can't bring a guest if there's, if there's not enough people online. So anyway, that's where we are. It was it was real trouble for Jeffrey Clark. The committee continued to to present a case of fraud against Clark and against Trump. Um, and actually, they had one other and actually another Republican congressman, uh, Scott, who's clearly potentially in trouble as well with this. And the final thing was Sidney Powell. There was talk about appointing Sidney Powell as a special counsel, which any of you following know what I'm talking about. Those who aren't following, it's hard to explain. But I mean, Sidney freaking Powell as special counsel. This woman was the most batshit crazy person on the planet where finally, I think even Trump finally, oops, even Trump finally distanced himself from this woman because she was so Looney Tunes. This is the woman who, who helped present the theory that dead Hugo Chavez 
was behind uh, dead Hugo Chavez was working with the CIA and either some company in Thailand or in Italy to steal the election. And anyway, yeah. Yep. So, all right, let's get on with this. So you guys know how to do this. I will, well, we do both though. No, we do both. We do, Ukraine is the main topic, but any breaking America news we will cover. In, and, and by the way, folks, in the next day, two, three or four days, we are going to find out if the U.S. Supreme Court uh, throws out Roe v. Wade, which protects the woman, a woman's right to choose, which protects the right to abortion in America. We, thank you, Louis. But either it's going to happen tomorrow or it's going to happen one of the first couple days of next week, most likely, because they've only got nine cases left and this is one of the cases. So I, I'm going to guess not tomorrow. Usually they, they wait for the last day for the worst one. So I'm going to guess it's going to be next week, but let's see. Let's see. Anyway, and when that comes up, we're going to talk about it because it's going to be one of the most earth shattering moments in American history in terms of importance. So this channel is about speaking the truth. And sometimes that truth is going to be stuff Republicans don't like. And other times when I go off about Biden and, and Ukraine, it's going to be stuff Democrats don't like. Get used to it. So, all right, guys, let's jump into this stuff. You all know how to do the questions amongst you all. And I will start to see if anybody did the Q&A as a favor. I will start for you all on TikTok. No, and we don't have to agree on everything. I appreciate you saying that, Dan, because the thing that pisses me off is when people play games. And it, and it, and it frankly, I mean, I'll say this too, because I get it on the left too. You know, and it's always on Twitter. I get it on the left. I will get it from people. You 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 give an opinion and they go, you're a man or you're a white man. And I get, literally get that as an argument from somebody about a point I raised about an important issue the country is debating. And they'll literally be like, white man. And I'm like, what the? <laughs> like, like, what the hell does that have to do? Like, like, what does that have to do with my argument? But it's people trying to shut down your argument. And frankly, it's the same kind of people who, when they talk about January 6th, they say, they didn't have any guns. It was just, uh, it was just rowdy. And you're like, really, guys? I mean, it's, it's, it's people who are not willing to have a reasonable discussion, even if they disagree. It's so hard. It's so hard. Yeah, we're not bringing up the UN. No, but it pisses me off because it's really, I get that our country is that way, but I just, and I guess it's also because it's the way I discuss stuff. Like, I don't mind. First of all, it's pr part of it. <clears throat> I don't want to be a whole soliloquy here, but part of it is because I have spent years educating people about gay rights in this country. I'm gay. I stuck my neck out starting in 1993 by working on the issue. By the late 90s, I was literally on Fox News and CNN defending gay rights issues. Um, I think I may have told you guys, I called my mom once because I was working on this very big issue in the late 90s. And I told her, I said, mom, just so you know, I'm working on this issue. It's getting a lot of attention. And she goes, well, it's not like you're going to be on TV saying you're gay or something. And I was like, CNN just asked me on. <laughs> I said, I kind of am. <laughs> um, and, but the thing is, you learned, I learned on gay rights stuff that you had to be an activist and you had to be, typically you had to be in your face with companies and corporations. You had to beat the hell out of corporations and you had to beat the hell out of members of Congress. But the public, you had to assuage the public, meaning you had to, you had to work the public. You had to be nice to them. I would put on, it was called my Republican suit, people would call it. I'd put on my nice suit. I'd go on Bill O'Reilly's show. Bill O'Reilly loved me. This is back like in 2000. A famous American guy on, on uh, Fox News at the time who was very polemical, very conservative. And I used to call him Mr. O'Reilly because he was a lot older than me. I wasn't going to call him Bill. He was like my dad's age or something, practically. So I would call him Mr. O'Reilly. And he loved that. He loved it. But it actually, and I'll, I'll stop with this, but the point is maybe it's my background that like I was brought up where you, you had to reach out to people because you needed to educate people about who you were. And you don't educate them by going, 
F you, F you, maybe a member of Congress. Yeah. But, but the public at large, you needed to win them over. And these guys just, you know, too many of these people are literally Donald Trump is great and liberals suck. And I mean, God, the number of people in the comments today too. Thank you for that. Thank you, Cammy. The number of people in the comments today that were going, why did you talk about all the times the Democrats did this? And I'm like, Okay, tell me, when did the Democratic president try to institute a coup d'etat? And when, after there was violence, like serious violence, did a Democratic president embrace the violence and say, yeah, that was great? Never, never are you going to find that. But anyway, all right. Blah, blah. And again, I don't blame all Republicans. A Republican the other day got pissed at me and said, you blame all Republicans. I don't blame all Republicans. There are a lot of good Republicans, but I got news for you. The bad Republicans run the Republican Party. And unless the good Republicans speak up, you own this. You own this. You can't vote for Donald Trump. And you can't vote for him again and say that, that you're not like the other ones. You own it this time. Your party, your party is un-American at this point, and you've got to go and change it, and you've got to go and stand up to them, and nobody is. All right, let me pull this up. I'm checking my email. I, I'm like, I don't know why I'm checking my email. I was, I meant to go into my TikTok because I was trying to pull up the questions, and also I'm looking at my email going, why am I looking at my email? Um, I doubt it. Somebody's saying federal agents are searching Trump's home right now. I doubt it. It would be, I mean, Check the news, anybody, but I think it would be, it would certainly be all over the news, although my news is off, but I, I doubt that. Um, you know, DeSantis, my concern about DeSantis is somebody asked, eh, why not? Because we're talking about that. I don't mind, like I said, I don't mind bro broaching somewhat into other politics. Ron DeSantis, uh, she's asking about, is the governor of Florida, a Republican governor of Florida, um, very conservative, very Trumpy. I would argue that early on he he clear he made clear that he wanted to pick up the um, he wanted to pick up the mantle. Yeah, we know Jeffrey Clark's home. She was saying Donald Trump's. Um, we know that 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 DeSantis wanted to pick up Trump's mantle and be the next Donald Trump that all of his people followed. He's been in kind of a fight with Trump over this because Trump knows that he's like. Rather than sucking up to Trump, he's trying to independently be Trump. Um, very intelligent man, went to Harvard. Um, he's very polemical. He comes across very much like Chris Christie. Again, if you follow American politics, you know who I mean. Chris Christie is the former Republican governor of uh, New Jersey, who actually was very liberal for a Republican, but then became a big Trumper, which made no sense because Christie was really liberal. Um, but DeSantis... DeSantis likes to throw bombshells. Most things DeSantis does to me are bombshells. He was, uh, I don't want to say he was against. Yeah, call me Mr. Hervosis, exactly. Um, only if you're arguing with me. No, but uh, but DeSantis was blocking. He was one of the, I say he really was one of the COVID deniers. He was doing everything he could to block vaccine mandates in his state. He even, even they got legislation passed to charge cruise ships $5,000 a passenger if they required the passengers to prove that they were vaccinated. This is after all the cruise ships like blew up with all their COVID. The state of Florida tried to force cruise ships to not, to not check if passengers were vaccinated. I mean, they they didn't want vaccines. They didn't want masks in schools. They they it was oh, and his big thing was using what the hell was it? Remember the drug? He wanted he he basically took the nation's supply of that drug that was going around and started giving it to everybody every time they got COVID, and we started running out. He's he's Trump. He's Trump. He's a he's a smart. It wasn't ivermectin. It was the one that actually works. It, no no no. It was the one that actually works. But but he took the nation's supply and we didn't have enough of it. Regeneron, Regeneron. I think Regeneron might be the name of the company, but it was the Regeneron drug. Um, so yeah, I'm not a big fan of his because my, my biggest problem with him, he's a bomb thrower. He, you know, 
if if you told me Adam Kinzinger was running, I would say Adam Kinzinger is really far to the right. Mike Pence, putting aside for the fact that Mike Pence kind of went back and forth on the Trump stuff, he did the right thing in the end. My problem with Mike Pence is Mike Pence is a religious conservative. That's my problem with Mike Pence. Ron DeSantis, my problem with Ron DeSantis is he's a bomb thrower. He makes positions so that he can piss off the liberals. And that isn't the way you govern. And he's going to do it as president. And that's what worries me. The way Donald Trump talked about, remember when Trump talked about um, COVID wasn't really bad? COVID, he made April or so, Trump go, April or May, I forgot what it was. And Trump said, well, the numbers really aren't that bad because if you if you exclude the blue states, meaning the Democratic states, our numbers are great in America overall. And we all kind of went, what? And Trump would do that all the time. So in any case, you got me on a long thing on DeSantis, but but as I said, that's what worries me. It's not his, I can, I can respect other Republicans who are way too conservative for me, you know, I mean, Pence, like I said, Pence is anti-gay too. It bothers me, but that's a policy thing I dis- differ with him on. DeSantis is a bomb thrower and that's not what we need. We certainly don't need it right now, but you're sure as hell not going to get me for president. Um, well, there was a whole thing with his, exactly, one of his biggest campaign contributors also had stock in the company that he was promoting. It's all sorts of stuff. Um Just looking to see what other questions. Did, I'm trying to see if you guys had any questions here over on the big board. Um, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? <laughs> um, what can we do in Ukraine to save three foreign fighters in eastern Ukraine that were sentenced to death? Yeah, those are the two Brits and the Moroccan. There's not a lot we can do. I mean, the, the problem is that... Russia would like, Russia wants us to tie ourselves in knots over these guys. They tried these guys because they wanted to, to tie us up in knots. I mean, they wanted us to beg for, excuse us, to beg for their release. And they want to, I guarantee you, Russia would be asking us for something outrageous, outrageous in exchange for letting these guys go. These guys have to be included as any part of a general prisoner prisoner exchange. And that's the way it's got to be. In essence, they've been taken hostage. So, you know, you can negotiate with 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 Russia, but it's tough because, you know, it's it they they took hostages. They took hostages. So I don't know. I'm not sure much can be done because you're falling into the trap by getting too involved with it at this point. They are they are prisoners of war members of the Ukrainian army, and they should be treated as such. And they should be part of any prisoner exchange and any negotiation that Ukraine has. And that's what I would say. I mean, if anything, thank you, Jesse. If anything, I would tell the Ukrainian government, you know, if you're having a negotiation over a prisoner exchange, I would love for you to include them. I would I would put that kind of gentle pressure. Thank you, Ricky Tiki. If I were the British government, I would certainly put that kind of gentle pressure behind the scenes on the Ukrainians. You know, we'd really love you to include it in your ask that these are three or two, I guess, if you're going to leave the poor Moroccan behind, which hopefully they wouldn't. But but beyond that, you know, you can't do it. Yet again, some crazy person who actually thinks I'm going to let you join me in the live. Does that work with people? Thank you, Azamak. It's very strange. They asked to come on and be side by side like, why would anybody do that? No idea. No idea. Um, let me go back to TikTok. TikTok, TikTok. No news about Lithuania. The Russians have been lying and the Russians are cry- trying to cause hysteria. And of course, Russians lie. It's what they do. So they've been lying about, um, oh my God, the Ukrainian, the Lithuanians shut off all trade. They've, they've embargoed Kaliningrad. They haven't. They haven't. All they did was cut off imports and exports of, of, uh, of goods that are covered by the embargo. And that means 50% of the, of the other goods are going fine. You know? Yeah. Um, what would a victory for Ukraine and the free world look like? I mean, the thing is, a victory for Ukraine is going to be getting its land back. 
for at the very least getting its land back, right? Then you get into the larger issue of war reparations, getting its 2 million civilians back that, that Russia has stolen, including 300,000 children, right? I mean, I, it's, it's going to be very difficult to get. I mean, at the very least, if I were Ukraine, you got to get the land back. You got to get the land back. The only, no, I don't know what you were told about the Brits, but it would be all over the news if they were executed. So if it's not all over the news, it didn't, I wouldn't trust it having happened. If, you know, always rely on, always rely on major news sources for something that big. Yep. I believe the number, it wasn't two. I believe the number was 300,000 children. The Russians admitted it to it the other day. The Russians said they had 200,000 um, they had two two million, excuse me, 1.9 million Ukrainians, including I believe it was 300,000 children, that they you know that they're protecting in the country. Sick, absolutely sick, you know. Okay, get ready to drink, guys, because I'm changing the temperature in my apartment because it's getting too warm and sticky. One moment. Whoosh! It's very humid here today. It's been very like. Oof. Merrick Garland, I don't know if he's still in Ukraine, but he was in Ukraine, among other reasons, because he's helping them with uh, war crimes, with war crimes prosecution of the Russians. And he even set up a, a, uh, a group within the Justice Department to help. That's really good. He's, he's got the top, sort of the top Nazi hunter from the Justice Department that's, uh, that's now heading it up, which is very good. So that was very cool. So it's very good that he's there. I know. Yeah, drink when I curse. Oh, boy. Tired, tired, tired. Um, they shouldn't. Uh, European Union dove countries trying to dilute the level of sanctions on goods to Kaliningrad via Lithuania. Okay, horrible idea. I hope to God they're not trying to do that. That would be a horrible idea. Um uh, all right, Lithuania, victory in Ukraine. No, I mean, Ukraine, thank you, Nikki. If Ukraine joins the EU, it's going to have no impact on whether Putin has to withdraw. No, it won't have any impact. I mean, this is about long-term economic, uh, long-term economic issues. And Elise, yes, I do have a thermostat. The problem is my apartment drives me crazy because a one degree a one degree swing in temperature is either too hot or too cold. And it drives me up the freaking wall, absolutely up the wall. And that's the way it is. Well, and what I think it is too, is the thermostat always goes over one because it's trying to be economical. So it's always swinging two degrees and a two degree swing, forget it. Is it just between cold and sweating to death? Um, thank you. Putin sucks for that. Um, hi from New Zealand. Is it true that the Russian fleet is prepping to attack Odessa? What we know about that was from a few days ago. Thank you, Net Lynn. Let me just show you guys. So Odessa's down here. This is some of the only sea coast that Ukraine has available right now because the rest of it is occupied by the Russians, right? Oops, sorry, it goes up to, where does it go up to? Mali or Mariupol, at least. Yeah, Mariupol, at least. I think, it, I don't remember if it stops here or not, but this is definitely coast, coast. The Russians claim are, are occupying all of it now. So this is what remains. There was talk in the last couple of days of a large number of Russian ships uh, heading towards Odessa. The only thing is, <clears throat> The, the Russians are legitimately worried about what missiles the Ukrainians now have. Um, for example, when the Ukrainians took out that, uh, what do you call it? I keep calling it a tugboat, but that's that makes it sound a transport ship, I guess, that had weapons. Excuse me. It had weapons, ammunition, and troops on board. The Ukrainians took it out with, I believe, a Hellfire missile which are some of the new missiles they got from the West, anti-ship missiles. Well, once the Ukrainians did that, I guarantee you it put the fear of God into the Russian fleet. And I wouldn't be surprised if that Russian fleet was coming closer and you know, it was coming closer and it was looking to whether, whether it should 
at least bomb Odessa. I'm sure at least they were going to bomb the hell out of Odessa, whether they actually tried to land. But but once the Ukrainians blew up that chip, Harpoon missile? Was it Harpoon or Hellfire? Am I getting my missiles mixed up? Is Hellfire not also boat? They had just gotten new ones in. Help me. Am I mixing up my missiles? Help me out here, folks. Is Hellfire... Is Hellfire not uh, not anti-ship as well? Just I know Harpoon, but is Hellfire not one of them or not? I know you're all saying Harpoon. I'm asking you about a Hellfire. <laughs> it, it was a Patronus. Not Hellfire? Okay. All right. Then maybe it was a Harpoon. But they had just gotten the missiles, and it was the first... I talked about it the other night, that it was the first proven use of them using this missile to go after... Um, to go after a um, to go after a, a, a Russian ship. How far is air to ground? Okay, okay. Not that the Ukrainians wouldn't use it, frankly, but um, but maybe it was a maybe it was a harpoon. I'll have to look and see. I never keep my notes from day to day, so oh well. In any case, the point is, it was the first use, the first known use of the Ukrainians using it to blow up a Russian ship. So the Russians, you know, would be scared to death and start to pull back even further. So I'm, uh, I think that may be what happened. Wasn't Neptune? No, no. It was one of the new. It was one of the new missiles coming in from the west. So it wasn't Trident either. Um, but anyways, Harpoon. Okay, it was Harpoon. In any case, um, so that's what's up. So I wouldn't be surprised if the if the imminent attack on Odessa just got delayed a little bit because they're freaking out a little bit, which is good. You know, they're worried about it. Oh, uh, let me look here. Oh man. Yeah. We may have to, we may have to call it a little short today since like I said, I'm just exhausted from that. I knew it was going to happen, but having the one earlier today and then having it pushed up so closely. Um, dee, 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 dee. Yep, thank you for those, Netlin. Well, what else do you guys, do you guys have questions here? Otherwise I'll keep doing with theirs. Um, yeah, it wasn't the Neptune. It for sure wasn't the Neptune. It was an H. I'm guessing Harpoon though, since I'm thinking Hellfire. Although, hold on, I'm gonna Google this because this is annoying me now. I'm going to Google this. Um, Russian tugboat missile harpoon. Okay, everyone's saying it's a harpoon. Okay, okay, with the harpoons, you are brilliant, y'all. It was a harpoon. There you go. <clears throat> yep, it was the harpoon. Um, that's funny. Well, the only problem is the news notes are just the daily news. I mean, I don't keep them but it's just sort of the news that happened that day. So I'm not sure what I would do with it. You know what I mean? Dr. Google knows everything. This is true. Oh no, I'm a big fan of, I'm a big fan of Google if you know how to use Google. I always worry about people who use Google and they kind of, you know, I found it on Google and you're like, oh God. <laughs> like now what, now what? <laughs> um, I am not sure what the Bayraktar, excuse me, is, is uh, equipped with. All right. What about what else here? What's up with that? I saw that Luke is asking any opinion on the FSB agent, who, which is the follow on to the KGB that got a mouthful of buckshot. Yeah. The guy, the guy that carried Putin's nuclear football, the nuclear football is the briefcase with the nuclear code, so to speak, that follows the president around our president, but also theirs um, reportedly got shot. And I don't know what the deal is. I, it's weird. I mean, mind you, this is Russia. So it's not like it's, I'm assuming it's not like you just get shot on the street the way we get shot on the street here. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of crime in Russia, but still, you know what I mean? It's very weird. It's very weird. No, I don't know what, but I, but I saw that story. It, the guy who carries around Putin's nuclear football, let me, I'm going to Google that one too. No, I saw that one and I was like, thank you, Lizzie. Um, uh, Putin nuclear football. Now it's not in any, it's not in any, 
super credible news sources yet. That's one warning sign right there. Okay. Where did they get this from? Okay. I mean, okay. The Kiev Post is reporting it. I don't know of the Kiev Post, and I don't know whether one should trust the Kiev Post, but that's the only ones reporting it. That a, a retired security officer who once was tasked with carrying President Putin's briefcase, carrying the nuclear codes, was shot, was found shot in his home. You know, who knows? Who knows? I, I'm not thrilled, as I said, that no one else has the story. So I, at this point, take it with a grain of salt. Take it with a grain of salt. I like my, I was going to say I like my conspiracy theories, but I actually don't like my conspiracy theories at all. So yeah, I'm skeptical. I'm skeptical. Um, oh man, I do need a rest. Well, I need a rest because today just went on forever. And I knew it was gonna, but well, no, because today was supposed to be at one o'clock. So I figured by three o'clock it's done. I can take a half hour nap. And they postponed it to three and literally at five, at 10 after five, I said, okay, guys, I'm signing off because it hadn't been done yet. So, oh, Infin, you are so about to leave. Yeah, I get up and I look for Ukraine news all day for the videos and for you guys for a night. So yeah, not exactly, not exactly. Thank you, Iggy. Um, oh, I couldn't care less. Um, thoughts on Putin deploying the Samat missile for combat duty by the end of the year. This is the big, scary nuclear weapon that the Russians have that can carry 10 nukes or how, whatever it is. Who cares? Who cares? Seriously, though, I mean, who cares? What's he planning on doing with it? He's going to start a nuclear war? I mean... That's that's almost one of the jokes with nuclear weapons is they can't be used. They can't be used. You know, if you use your nuclear weapon, you're going to get hit with our nuclear weapon. So what's the point? I mean, it just doesn't even well, this is a new one. So one would one would like to assume it works. But who knows if that's real? Right. <laughs> um, but I mean, if. If this nuclear weapon hits the United States, our nuclear submarines are going to destroy Russia. And there is no way that Russia can destroy our nuclear submarines. And there's no way that Russia can destroy the British nuclear submarines. They are submarines that sit, you know, I always say, I guess, thank you, Onyx. I guess 1,500 feet under the sea because the real number is classified. And I tried to get it out of a sailor once when I was on a classified trip and he wouldn't give it to me. And I, and I said, you know, what levels it classified at? And he told me, and I was like, I've got clearances beyond that, but he wouldn't tell me, <laughs> I guess they, they, they felt it was need to know, but I could have pushed the issue, but I was being nice. But in any case, my guess is it, they can go down to like 1500 feet. They hide very easily and no one will ever find them. So that if Russia ever attacks NATO, even if they obliterate us, our nuclear weapons on our nuclear submarines and British nuclear submarines will obliterate Russia. So I could care less that Russia's got some big new scary weapons. So what? So what? Seriously. I mean, I mean, we've got to keep ours up to date with theirs just because, you know, just in case, but it's just such, it's, it's, it's again, it's, it's Putin. It's the, it's the miss, it's his missile envy, you know? I have nuclear weapon. Remember, I keep saying it's what's this? It's Fredo from The Godfather. I have nuclear weapons too. <laughs> you know, it's like okay, Vlad, you have nuclear weapons too. We're that's really good. We're we're very proud of you. No, the French do, but do the French have nuclear submarines? I didn't think they did. Although that movie I saw claimed they did. I watched the French movie once that claimed they had nuclear submarines. When I say nuclear, I'm sorry, ballistic missile submarines. I guess the, the movie I saw claimed they did. Do they? I keep forgetting about that. All right. We're going to Google again. I believe you. But I, how many do they have? How many? Submarines. France. France has increased its defenses by deploying two more of its ballistic missile submarines. The movie's undoubtedly response to Russia is where the country now has three of its four submarines capable of firing nuclear warheads at sea. What do you know? 
Wow. Okay. I didn't even realize that. All the better. All the better. So, so the Brits have four. The French at least have three. Well, they have four, but they've got three that I think are at sea and capable of firing. So there you go. And the U.S. has got like 12 or 14. I mean, it's just, they're out of their minds. They're out of their minds, you know? Anyway. All right, guys, I'm going to, this is only 10 minutes early from when I normally call it quits. I'm going to call it quits. We can, I will hang with you until five after just to chat. And then I'm going to, then I'm going to go also because I now, uh, one of my neighbors is sick and he wants me to go across the street and get him some Gatorade. So I'm going to do, so I'm doing that too, which doesn't bother me. I mean, I'm, of course I'm going to do it for him, but it's just, I'm tired and I want to sit, I want to sit in front of the TV and I've got to now go to a store, go do a run to the store. So why don't we assassinate who Putin? Well, a lot of reasons because, oh, Sasha, let me see where Sasha is. Because if we get caught, it's a nuclear war. <laughs> We're at war with Russia and that would be bad. One of the other problems is you don't know who you're getting yet uh, next. And one of the things that you, uh, you know, one of the rules about ass assassination, so to speak, not assassination, one of the rules about regime change, that's the nice way of putting it, is You've got to know who you're getting next and you've got to know that the person you're getting next is better. That's the first thing. The second thing is you need to know that, that the country isn't going to fall apart if you lose, if it's a strong man. This was the concern with Iraq was that Iraq was going to fall into three pieces if we took out Saddam Hussein, right? And Iran would take over one. I mean, like that it would then, and then therefore Iran would be much more powerful. These are things you've got to worry about. So, it's not clear who comes next and that it gets any better. And the downside is Russia finds out we did it and, you know, we go to war with Russia because that's clearly an act of war. So a lot of reasons why it's something you might not want to do. Um, I sound like Max Headroom on Twitch. Only on Twitch I sound like Max Headroom. Okay, mighty Twitchers. What does that mean? <laughs> What does that mean? <laughs> oh boy. The Brits have more than four. Oh, six to eight older subs that are silent but can fire nukes. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that I didn't know. Okay. Did not know that. That's very interesting. Huh. Very interesting. Okay. See you, Ian. Good to see you again. Oh, man. But yeah, I mean, what am I going to do? Tell him, what am I going to do? Tell him I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> the poor guy is sick enough that he needs like he needs something from the store. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> you know, so. Oh, man. All right. Cause, well, you know, the only thing is she is. She is laying down somewhere. I'm guessing. Oh, no. Hey, you. Okay, I'll get you. Let me get you a treat. She was sleeping under the pillow on the couch. But then she saw me. She saw me look up at her, so I'll give you a little treat, maybe. Come say hi to everybody. Okay. Come say hi to everybody. Oops. And I'll give you two treats because you've earned it. Because oops. Boop, 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 boop. There you go. There's one. Okay. Good girl. Oh, good girl. Another one. Oh boy. There you go. Sasha needs a haircut. She's looking a little bit, she's looking a little bit haggard. <laughs> her face, the, the, the fur on her face has grown considerably. That's where it really gets crazy. And I've been trimming it, but she still really needs a, fair, a haircut. Boop, 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 boop. Uh, update was late. Oops, sorry. Went very well. We've got some interesting ideas, but some of them, some of them I'm, uh, I had to call the government to find out if there's stuff we could even import into the U.S. So it's it's complicated. Some neat ideas, though. Some neat ideas. But uh, not going to tell you until we figure it out. I've got to get some more information from Vlad and then send it to a government agency. They've got to look at it to see if we can even import these kind of things into the U.S. Forget other countries. I don't even know. But I mean, but it's sort of ways we could do fundraisers or whatever. Um, you know, Stylecat at this point, I've got a lot of moderators already. I mean, I pick moderators, basically people that have been here long enough. Well, initially it was a crapshoot, but we've ended up with very good moderators. Oops, sorry. It was a crapshoot, but we, well, we've ended up with really good moderators. Now, 
uh, from that. And now I occasionally, <laughs> that's nice you bought me the paper crane, but that's not how I pick moderators, but thank you. <laughs> um, but the way, you know, now it's when we run low, like the other day I think was an off time or something. Maybe I'd done the morning thing and we really needed moderators. So I picked a couple of the regulars that I just, you know, that I've known you guys for a couple months. They're people who have been here regularly. And I just, after a while, if they were trolls, I felt like they would have been trolly at this point, you know? But that's kind of the way I'm doing it. But but at the same time, we try not to. Oh, big Mike. <laughs> you guys are funny. Big Mike. Um, at the same time, by the by the way, do you notice how good this mic is? That's what I was telling you guys. My big mic, this mic is such a good mic that it that if I if I go up here, you either won't hear me or you're hearing next to nothing. But then if I'm talking here, that's how good this microphone is. I assume it's on now. Is it working now or no? Well, now it should be on. Hold, not you guys. You guys, I know. For you guys, is my big mic working now? Can you hear it now? Dee, dee. Yeah, see, that's why. Because the mic is working, but it is such a good mic that if it's not near my mouth, it picks up nothing. And it's a great mic because, A, if there's noise going around, this mic is okay, but, you know, for you guys, I mean, for not for you guys, but for the iPad, what do you do? But I've got, I got this for my podcast on purpose for that reason, because not only would you not hear noise going on in the building, you know, banging or, or whatever, but it also my ceilings are very tall. And if I used a regular mic, you would hear, actually, I'll even show, I'm like into the, I'm into the, the science of this. It's, I don't, it's, I don't know if it's noise cancellation. I don't, I don't know how good mics do this. Let me switch and I'll show you guys. Um, okay. This is my default. Now I'm, now I'm talking to you guys over here on my computer mic. Notice the difference. Now notice that it's my computer mic, first of all, but you're probably also going to notice that there's like, reverb, like a little bit of echo going on too, because my ceilings are so tall. Oop, one second, I'm going back to the other mic and then we'll see if I miss somebody. There you go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Um, yeah, see, and now I'm on my other mic again. So that's the other thing is it also ends up it, 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 oh, you heard Sasha in the background. That's funny. That's because it was the other mic. Um, but it also cuts out the, uh, it, it cuts out the reverb as well, which is nice. Now, real quick, did I miss a super chat question? One moment here. Was just ambushed while filming a TikTok dance in Ukraine. Oh, God, no way. God, I hope he's okay. Jesus Christ. Um, it is an excellent mic. No, this, this and the box and everything combined was like $550 or $600 because it's a very good mic. But, but for the podcast, I wanted a really good one. Um, Sorry, Craig. Um, what do you think the state of the Russian nuclear arsenals is? <laughs> well, that that's something we've been talking about from the beginning is is whether Russia's nukes even work, because, as you said, like it's it's the perfect target for. Well, I was thinking of they're old and it's electronics and electronics just go bad. Right. You've got a lot of computer parts in these weapons. You've also got wires and things. They go bad. They corrode. In terms of perfect target for Russian corruption, yeah. I mean, uh, I don't do the podcast anymore. Think about the corruption with this. If you're a Russian official, you're going, we're never going to use the nukes, right? We're never using the nukes, right? If we use the nukes, America uses the nukes and we all die. And, and billions of dollars going for keeping up our nukes. I could either put the money into the nukes if I'm a Russian, or I can steal the money and no one's going to know until the day they try to shoot the nukes. But when the day they try to shoot the nukes, America's going to nuke them back and no one's going to be there to punish me. So why not take the money? There's no way for them to really know. So I would guarantee you that Russia's, that Russia's, uh, that Russia's uh, uh, nuclear program is definitely missing a ton of a, a ton of money. Yeah, the problem we've got though is we have to always assume that that Russian nukes work because all they need is one nuke to cause real problems. You know, one nuke hits New York City or DC, and we're we're in real trouble. 
And that's, that's all, I mean, so, you know, it's any case. So it's, 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 it's nice to think that a lot of them don't work, but I'm not sure. And I'm not sure it changes our policy. Oh, oh, the dog wants back in. I'm not sure it changes our policy is the thing. Boom. All right, guys, I'm going to sign off. Um, the mic, it's a, it's a sure mic. S what is it? S C H S H S H U R E. It's the mic that Joe Rogan uses. And it's the mic that Michael Jackson, I guess, used for Thriller or something. But it's the same one, Joe Rogan. It's very good. Oh, the recap. Let me do a quick recap. Yeah. It's a wonderful mic. It's just, as I said, it's pricey, but I was doing the podcast. And frankly, even for doing this, it's, it's, it's so nice to have a really good mic. So I thought, you know what? Why not do it? Because also, if I ever do TV interviews again, you know, I mean, first of all, I can lower it kind of out of the way so you don't see it. Or if I'm being really fancy TV, I have my mic here, if I'm being very cool. So let me do a recap for you. Get these in a row. And then run across the street. Okay, recap of the news. So Ukraine got uh, European Union candidate status today. Overall, with the war, we are heading towards a war of attrition in the East, which means basically both sides stuck firing at each other, but not much movement. Whereas in the South, there may be some movement towards the Ukrainian side. Um, the governor of Donetsk Oblast in the East says Ukraine controls nearly 45%. That's significant since, oh, yes, right, and Moldova, and Moldova, as well as Ukraine, EU candidate status, um, that Ukraine controls nearly 45% of Donetsk Oblast. That's actually a good thing. Um, the Russia is trying to make Kharkiv a frontline city. Russia seems to have some crazy delusion that they're, hello, Kiev, Lucius over in Kiev. Russia has some crazy delusion that uh, they're going to, I guess, still take on Kharkiv. Good luck with that. Um, Ukrainian intelligence says Russian proxies, meaning collaborators, are planning to hold referendums to proclaim Kherson and Zaporizhia republics, meaning independent of Ukraine, on September 11th. In an interview with a German newspaper, uh, NATO chief Stoltenberg talked about how supply, uh, supplying state-of-the-art weaponry to Ukraine would be important to helping it liberate its land in the East. Um, the U.S. multi-launch rocket systems have arrived completely in Ukraine, all four of them, and today the administration promised another four. Uh, Nike and Cisco are gone for good, they announced today, not coming back to Russia. There were some new good polls from Europe that I didn't print out very well, so we're not talking about those. Um, Germany, Ch uh, Ch Chancellor Schultz of Germany, talked today of a new Marshall Plan for Ukraine. That was kind of a big deal. Um, Ukraine is to begin the first trial of a Russian soldier accused of rape. Many more to come. The Supreme Court ruled that Americans have a constitutional right to carry concealed weapons in public. And the latest hearing on January 6th insurrection happened today, basically targeting the one of the masterminds of the coup attempt, Jeffrey Clark. I always get the two Jeffreys mixed up. Jeffrey Clark, who is in real trouble. <laughs> He's in real trouble. All right, guys, I'm going to sign off because I can even tell like my head's even hurting like I need to I need to take a break. Sorry to shut off early, although early is an hour and 23 minutes. So, you know, it's all relative in the grand scheme. <laughs> in terms of my generosity, it's early, but we did pretty good today with an hour and 23 minutes. So thank you all. We'll be back tomorrow at six o'clock, Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern. Thank you here. I'll hang up on you guys first. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, um,